Hello and welcome to Yes Auto. I'm Cam Tate and this week I'd like to talk about synthetic fuels because a consortium of oil companies in Europe has had enough of electric cars and it thinks it has a better way of dealing with the climate crisis. Fuels Europe, which represents 40 companies that provide almost the entirety of Europe's petroleum supply, has laid out plans to bring a synthetic fuel revolution to the continent. It claims the fuels will help bring down vehicle emissions by recycling CO2 in the atmosphere and converting it into fuel. If the body gets its way and can bring about changes to EU policies that allow combustion engine cars to compete against EVs, it plans to reduce CO2 emissions by 100 million tonnes by 2035, which it claims is the equivalent of 50 million EVs. That all sounds pretty good, but we already have cars that do a great job at reducing CO2 emissions. They're called electric cars, and they're considered by many to be the future of mobility. And it's the same people that are saying Fuels Europe's plan is a last ditch effort by fuel companies to stay relevant. However, as I'm about to prove, it's a lot more complicated than that. Synthetic fuel is a term you'll be hearing a lot more often in the coming years, if Fuels Europe gets its way. So let's take a look at what it actually means. Synthetic fuels, also known as low carbon liquid fuels or LCLFs, are created by extracting CO2 from the atmosphere and combining it with hydrogen from water. Naturally, this is quite an energy intensive process, though companies such as the Bill Gates backed Carbon Engineering are able to use renewable energy to minimize their environmental impact. The sales pitch is pretty impressive. Extract carbon dioxide from the air and combine it with hydrogen to make a fuel that's not only cleaner than what you would find at the pumps today, but it's enough to make your combustion engine vehicle carbon neutral. In fact, Carbon Engineering says a large synthetic fuel plant would extract as much CO2 from the air as 40 million trees. Obviously, that doesn't mean we should rip up the rainforest and build thousands of synthetic oil refineries instead, but it's incredible to think that a refinery could actually be helping out the environment. Now, synthetic fuels are by no means a new trend. They've existed for decades, but early estimates suggest the process was simply too expensive to be a feasible alternative to conventional fuels, costing some $600 per tonne of CO2. However, advancements in technology and good old engineering know-how means that estimates have come down to around $230. Now, Fuels Europe acknowledges that synthetic fuels have a greater impact on massive vehicles like planes and boats because it's harder to come by alternative energy sources. Get the motoring industry on board at a consumer level and hopefully that technology will filter up to bigger machines. However, the electric car might have something to say about this. On the surface, the electric car makes synthetic fuels look like the company's last gasp attempt to wave the flag for combustion machinery while the rest of the world turns its attention to quieter and seemingly cleaner electric cars. Battery powered vehicles have zero tailpipe emissions, unlike cars powered by synthetic fuels, and they're far more efficient too. Electric cars are able to convert north of 75% of their battery power into moving forwards. But because combustion cars have more moving parts and use a series of continuous explosions to move, they have an efficiency of around 20 to 40%. It's not looking good for synthetic fuels here, but that's not really the reason why companies think it may be the future of energy. Fuels Europe says that current EU legislation, which is based around tailpipe emissions, flatters electric cars because it ignores the fact that EVs aren't zero emissions if you take into consideration the battery production process. Most electric cars, and pretty much any smart device you can think of, will be powered by a lithium-ion battery. As it currently stands, lithium is a pretty abundant metal. Unlike fossil fuels, it doesn't look like we'll be running out of lithium anytime soon. However, a recent study found that the cost of producing an EV with a lithium ion battery in China was around 13 tons of CO2, 3.2 of which came from the manufacturing of the battery. Combustion engine cars, meanwhile, cost 10.5 tons of CO2 to produce. And while some European countries are able to rely on renewable energy, there are a number of nations, the UK included, where electricity is also generated by burning coal. So yes, there are no emissions coming out of the exhaust, because there isn't one, but it's technically not a zero emission vehicle. Still, they're far more environmentally friendly and efficient compared to a conventional combustion engine car. And while synthetic fuels promise to reduce CO2 figures, 
The rapid development rate of EVs means that electricity is still the energy choice in the car world. But there is one area that LCLFs have an advantage over electricity. One of the big drawbacks of owning an electric car, if you live in more rural areas or in a country where the EV has yet to be fully embraced, is the lack of infrastructure. While the number of charging stations in the UK rises by the thousands every year, a large number of drivers still have to go out of their way to charge their car. And once you get to the charging station, you'll need to wait for at least an hour for a full charge if you're using an ultra-fast supercharger. But there's already a massive infrastructure in place for combustion engine cars. All oil companies would need to do is retrofit filling stations, a bit like the switchover from leaded to unleaded fuel in 1989. What's more, cars would need only small modifications to run on synthetic fuel, so customers wouldn't need to go out of their way and buy a new car to reduce their carbon footprint, which is what you'll need to do if you plan on going down the EV route. It's no wonder then that synthetic fuel has caught the eye of performance car makers. Earlier this year, McLaren said it would make prototype vehicles that run on synthetic fuel to prove the technology is a viable alternative to battery electric systems. Not only would LCLFs allow them to produce cars that make noise, something sorely missing in the EV world, but it also helps reduce the weight because you don't need to lug around hefty battery cells. And then there's motorsport. We know series like Formula One can be a real driver for change. And we even saw Mercedes install an F1 derived MGUH or motor generator unit heat into one of its road cars this week. With the sport looking into synthetic fuels for its next engine formula, especially as Formula E has exclusive rights on electric powertrains for 25 years, it could bring oil companies back into the mix. The benefits of synthetic fuels are hard to ignore, but the electric car movement is already in full swing. If LCLFs are going to share the limelight with electric cars, then the EU is going to need to introduce some major changes to its 2050 climate neutrality target. And that seems pretty damn unlikely. But I'd like to know what you think. Do you think that synthetic fuels have a space in today's world and can live alongside the electric car? Or is this just another last gasp effort for oil companies to remain relevant? Let me know in the comments below and I'll come and join you. If you enjoyed today's episode, feel free to leave a like and maybe even subscribe to the channel. You could also head over to yesauto.com for all the latest car news and reviews. I'm Cam Tate, I'll see you next week.